This world is unreliable We are not meant to stay No, the road home is not viable I know God is the only way So I'll wait for the Messiah The one who calms the storm unseen So I'll wait for my Savior The one who always walks with me Hey guys, and welcome back to another week at Broken Warrior Ministries. Um, again, another very special week this week. We're going to wrap things up uh, this week as far as the testimony goes. And uh, the reason being is there's no way I could give my testimony and what God's done for me uh, in my life without including this special lady sitting beside me. This is my wife, Patty Loftus. I'm, I know a lot of you already know her. For you, there's a, that... Uh, have been with us for a while 
but for those that are just tuning in, um, she has uh, been with me since this all started, and we, uh, our greatest hope tonight is that our testimony may speak to your hearts because we do understand and realize there are a lot of people that have gone through a lot of the issues that we have as a couple, um, as Christians, and uh, hope that it'll be an encouragement to you. But most of all, let you know that God's always there. And maybe some of the things that we didn't do, we can help you see that you need to do, especially when it comes to giving everything over to God. So uh, before we get started, I'd just like to ask the, the Lord to be with us. And y'all be patient with us. This is, uh, again, it's part of this is a very hard, um, it's hard stuff for us to go over, but I feel it's important because it's real. It's what we went through. So we're just going to ask God to help us through this tonight, okay? Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to just sit and glorify you, Father, to talk about you. And Father, through our story, I pray that if there be anybody out there tonight who is suffering from hurt, who is suffering from some of the things that we've gone through, Father, and they haven't given it to you, Father, most of all, if there's somebody out there tonight that has never given their life to you, Father, may they realize tonight is the night for that. Help us, Father, as we go through this. We bless your holy name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take you through um, some of our journey. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know last week ran pretty long with mom, but I was not going to cut that short uh, because it was powerful. We're not going to try to cut this one short either. Uh, so bear with us. But... Um, uh, there's no way we could encompass everything. It would take us weeks, but we're going to try to give you what we feel are some of the most powerful points of our relationship and where it began and where we are now. Um, so we'll just, we'll start from the beginning. Um, and I guess the best way to start as far as the beginning goes, when, when Patty and I first met, um, well, before we met, actually, we were both going through um, and had come through a divorce, which if you have been through a divorce, especially if you've been through a divorce with children, uh, unless you've been there, I can't explain to you the pains that come along with that and the hurt that comes along with that. And so we were both... Um, we had both come through that and experienced that. It's not something that we had ever really wanted, but it, that nonetheless, that's what where life was at. And um, we were both pretty broken at that point uh, before we met. And I mean, just like I think everybody, all of you out there, really all you want to do is find somebody that you can dedicate yourself to live your life with uh, enjoy life and that's what we were both wanting uh, but again like I said we both had experienced divorce and it was a very I know it was it was really hard for for me just because I was only getting to see my kids uh, every two weeks and and I know I had a lot of issues there for a long time that I had somehow let my kids down. I know my kids would never say that, and uh, I don't think they feel that way, but as a dad, you know, that's something that, that I had felt that I had to work through. Um, I know you had a lot of issues that you had to go through as well emotionally uh, when it came to that. Um, you know, when we, um, when we came up, with our name for the ministry, Broken Warriors Ministry, a lot of that had to do with what I had been through. Um, I had been through quite a bit before I met Tony. I, like he said, I'd been through a divorce, but I also went through a time in my life where um, I had a boyfriend, and 
we were out one night and um, it's kind of a hard story but anyway I'm driving down the road he opened up the door um, not sure exactly what went on but he was there one minute and was gone the next and he passed away from his injuries that night and that really took a toll on me as a person um, and even with my walk with God so I'm explaining this to you because to tell you how broken that I was um, after that you know I was a single mom three kids it was hard for me to even get in a vehicle and just drive down the road um, I would have panic attacks things like that you know it was just it was a really hard ordeal for me to go through and and I felt so far away from God so the reason that I want you to know this story is because I was broken at that time and I was so broken that I couldn't even go to church I couldn't even I felt like I couldn't even get comfort from anywhere I, I had friends in my life you know that were with me then my sister Diane Dyer she was a big a big blessing to me and one of my friends Kelly she was a big blessing to me I never got through that time without them but so you know I had been married for 14 years and then this event happens and you just feel like you don't know where your life is going to go from that point you know I even thought about times of um you know if it hadn't been for my kids I don't even know if I would be here today because it was just such a hard struggle for me my I was so broken you know I had i you know lived for God years before that and then I just felt like I didn't even know where I was with God because when you have a broken heart it's it's hard to see past your brokenness and I just never even knew if I would get past that point you know and of course you know the night that this happened um, out you know doing things that probably shouldn't out of the club you know and it just I, God, God never left me. Even though I was broken, he never left me. And you know something I think that you said that's important to point out? And Christians, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. You never know what a person is going through. And you never know how much... You could change the course of an individual's day or possibly life by being that light, by being that beacon, by showing the love of Jesus. Uh, I have friends to this day that they seem to always know when to send the text messages to help lift me up. Uh, you know, talking about Kelly and Diane. Um, there are people that somehow God, just like he did for me when talked back in the weeks past, put men in my life to help be that father figure to me. Uh, he gave you the blessing of those people to be there to help get up under that yoke with you because I found out, you know, um, when you feel the pain of another person, it is up to us as Christians to make sure that we bear that burden with them. And when we know somebody is going through a situation, be vigilant in uh, keeping in contact with them, praying for them, giving them that encouragement. I know with, with Patty's story, um, and I'll say the same thing for me uh, with divorce and the thought of letting my kids down. I, if it hadn't been for 
the times that uh, I had those kind of people in my life. I was I was in that dark place as well, uh, but I knew I owed it to my kids to make sure that I kept on, and um, and I'm glad that I did because when uh, I was going through a lot of that, I, I wouldn't really talk to my family, my close family, a lot. I wouldn't talk to my mom, my dad, or anything like that about what was going on. Um, I would go see my my sister Judy and I just went to see her to get away from everything to talk to her and it just so happens that uh, on one trip out there to see her and it, it was it was literally at one of my lowest points for those of you that do not believe in love at first sight, I am here. I am living proof. We are living proof that that exists. And it, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's not that although the, she is the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen to me, it was not really that as much as it was that I felt like I had just walked up on the person that my spirit was looking for. And, uh, I have told her this on countless occasions that if it wasn't for her, um, don't know that I'd be here and she saved my life. And God began to do a work. Now here I am, I live in Tennessee. She's a friend of my sister, Judy, halfway across the continent of the United States. And there standing on my sister's porch was the woman that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with unbeknownst to me at the time. So, um, we know the brokenness, uh, of divorce. We know the brokenness of having things in our life. You know, mine a lot was, uh, with my family experiences. I know you had some of those as well, but with, uh, the devastation of that accident with Brian. Um, and you didn't, she didn't mention this, but I mean, when you, when you, when you hold somebody and you watch the life go out of their eyes and, um, they leave this world, that's something that you, uh, you never forget. I've seen it a number of times. Um, and it's just something that affects you and it uh, it can start to grow some deep roots but that day that we found each other I knew God was doing something and I just didn't know what or how powerful it was going to be um, we could spend a lot more time right here we really could uh, but after we met our our relationship developed and uh, it became very obvious to me um, that I did not want to live without this woman in my life and when we finally decided that um, we were going to get married we would talk about you know what, what are our hopes for uh, our new beginning what when we get married, what, what did we want out of our relationship? What did we want to do? And we knew because we had both served in the church yes. for a long time. Um, and going through that, and when I say dark valley, I mean pitch black valley, uh, where it was literally the one of those scenarios where you just you get up you put one foot in front of the other and you breathe that's about all I knew to do uh, and uh, God was there I didn't know what to say and to be honest uh, uh, this is just me being completely transparent I didn't even want to talk to God. 
uh, I didn't, um, I didn't know how. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. And so I know you had some of the same issues as well for you. You just didn't. Definitely. I was just so broken that I just really didn't know how to talk to God. You know, and that, I, I've, I've heard other people say that they, I mean, people have gone through a lot of things in life. And just the the crazy thing about what I went through is it just, it just happened. It was just an accident that happened. Nobody really can foresee that that was going to happen. It just did. But it alters your life forever. And I know a lot of people, I mean, there's a lot of things in this world that you can go through, you know, where hurt or just things happen that we feel like are out of our control and we don't know how to deal with it. And, you know, I was, I was a single mom at the time, three kids, you know, and then after that, trying to put myself through college to get, just have a better life. And I'm a very independent person. So, you know, one of the ways I got through it was just to, just to tell myself, I've got to, I, you just got to get up and do it every day. You just got to, keep going no matter what it was autopilot right for, for, for through that period but getting back on on track sorry i got sidetracked with that um one of the things that we had talked about that was very important to us because we had served in the church before and we knew how happy we were when we were in service for god and and had a relationship that was close to him we would talk about that all the time you know, mm-hmm. that when, when we were able to get married, uh, that we could get back in church. And because we both knew and, and had experience in church, we could make a difference. We could help people. Um, and I'll be honest, this conversation that's going on right now, um, we have talked about this for 13 years almost. Yeah. And when I say that, because the the enemy wants to put into your mind that uh, your story can't do anything to help anybody. Um, how could you think that that would help anybody? Yeah. But if I found out anything over the last few weeks of giving my testimony and like last week when mom uh, was with me in the, in her testimony, it's when you get real and you get raw and you get genuine with people and you reach out and let people understand and bear your soul to people and let them realize that, look, you're not alone. You're not going through this alone. That is what really gets to the heart of folks. Right. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get back into church. We wanted to get close to God again and uh, make God the center of our lives again. We we talked about how we wanted... So I had two kids, Kayla, my oldest, and Andrew, and you had three. Mm -hmm. You have three, and... uh, I have Ethan and Kelsey and Macy. And uh, so we became a Brady Bunch uh, <laughs> all of a sudden. Well, now Ethan, Ethan had gotten old enough at where he was graduating high school. And uh, so her life is rooted in how Oklahoma, my life is rooted in Cookville, Tennessee. And... Uh, we wanted to make sure that we could give our kids a loving environment because they deserved it. And we wanted to make sure that we were going to build a relationship that would stand the test of time. Uh, what we went through before, I never wanted to go through again. Right. I'm thankful that I will not ever go through that again. Uh, I've, I've told her this many times, uh, and for some it may sound silly, but 
and I'm not that far off from it. Uh, I enjoy the thought of just sitting in a rocking chair and if I can't do hardly anything else but make it to that chair, as long as she's sitting beside me, I really don't care what we've got, what we own. Um, having her at my side, I didn't care. Just as long as she was at my side. I married my best friend and I'm extremely thankful for what she has put up with over the years. Uh, Lord gave her a, a special blessing in being able to be patient with a, a very stubborn man. Uh, so with all that being said, that's what we wanted. Right. We wanted to build a life that was centered around God. We wanted to do the best we could for our kids and make them happy. Uh, we wanted to uh, have that relationship that was just pure joy. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, when, when we were together, I mean, I, I, I knew true happiness when I was with her. Uh, for the longest, it was just uh, maybe every two weeks, every month, because she was still in college. I was working in Tennessee that I would even be able to see her, and that was uh, that went on for quite a while. But uh, it didn't matter to me. I just all I wanted to do was get to the point where I could tell her I do for the rest of my life. <laughs> So that's what we had in mind. And you know, I think a lot of people, when they go into a relationship, that's what they have in mind. Uh, they want to be happy together. Now, there may be some people that, honestly, I'm sure there's a lot of people that enter into marriage and have no really idea or uh, thoughts when it comes to building a life centered around God. Um, and I'm just going to, pause right here for a moment for any any of you that are out there that are single or in a relationship and um, putting God at the center of that relationship is not at the forefront of it I would advise anybody that is looking at getting married seek out Christian marriage counseling sit down with somebody and talk about the realities of marriage and how important it is to put God at the center of it. I used to use the, the pyramid. Uh, when I would teach Sunday school class, I would use the, the pyramid and you've got the husband and the wife at the bottom of the corners and the closer you climb to God, the closer that you two become. And man, I tell you what, I know for us and I know for a whole lot of other people that's been the case. That's what we had planned. You know, but, sometimes they don't go as planned. Sometimes life just, things happen. Things happen that, I mean, life is not perfect all the time. I and, heard a famous quote one time. <laughs> uh, it was from a boxer. And he said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit. <laughs> uh, and we had one. And we had some hits. And um, we want to go through these only to, again, this is, this is not to bring up bad times, but it's to bring up how powerful and how good God is and how he's able to bring you through times and strengthen you and help you get through times. So when we got married, um, Patty moved to Tennessee with me. Because, again, I was only getting to see uh, Kayla and Andrew every two weeks, and uh, that was the only way I was going to get to see them. And the girls, uh, Kelsey and Macy, they both lived with her at the time, and and she brought them with mm -hmm. to Tennessee. And what what was that like? Well, that was definitely different for them because being in a small town, what they had all, what they had ever known, was just such small community. And here it was, even though Cookville is just not super big, it was a lot bigger than what 
they were used to. So, um, you know, taking them from everything that they knew and moving to Tennessee, it, it was hard on them. And they did give it, they gave it a year. And I will say they tried. They really they did. did. Uh, and I, I look at that time now and there's, there's no doubt. And I, one thing that, that is really big in where they went to school at was the girls' basketball team. Yeah. And that was something that was really special to them. And they knew that, you know, being in Tennessee, I'm away from all my friends. I'm away from the opportunity to be able to be a part of how Lady Lines. I mean, that was just, uh, that was really important to it them. It was important to them. And... um. And, and me knowing that, I mean, I knew in my heart that the place for me wasn't here, but that didn't mean that that they didn't, I mean, they didn't have the desire to be there. So, I mean, that was the hardest part. Whenever you have a divorce and you have so many different factors in, you know, that their dad was still, you know, and how, and it, it it's hard on a family unit. It's hard on the kids to be pulled in different directions and not really, you know, I mean, it's, it's not their fault. It's not their fault that things didn't work out, you know, the way, however, you know, kids, it, it, it's hard when you bring, we had several kids, so it was different factors coming in, but so it's, I finally come to the point where I was just like, I want my kids to be happy, you know, above my happiness. So, I mean, I told them, you know, you can go back and live with your dad. Um, I knew it was going to be a hard thing, but I wanted them to be happy. You know, I didn't want them to have to suffer for whatever mistakes that are, you know, that I had made in the past and then putting them in a different situation at the time, you know. So that was a hard thing. And, but... I mean, we had made our decision. Right. We wanted to be together. Mm-hmm. And... And I knew that that's, that that's what God, I mean, I really did. That's what God wanted. And I, I mean, it, things are hard at the time. You don't understand everything at the time. You know, we get caught in a picture of what's going on with us at that time instead of seeing a bigger picture that, hey, God's working and it is, it is going to be okay. It, it's all going to work out. You know, it's, we, sometimes we just see what's right in front of us and not the big picture. Well, it came down to a point where the girls just said, I want to go back home. Right. Um, and regardless of what anybody else may think or judge or whatever, um, I know this was probably one of the hardest moments in our marriage because Patty made a very hard decision to just say okay and they moved back to Oklahoma uh, which was best for them that's where their heart was and they had a good family life with their dad in Oklahoma and they were able to go be on the Howe basketball team and, you know, the things that they uh, wanted to do. But for Patty, it, uh, I can I can definitely say without a doubt that those were the darkest days for us. Uh, for her, obviously, because now, you know, she had decided to be my wife and what we had planned <laughs> for all these joyous things, uh, they don't go the way we think they're going to go. And here we find ourselves in the middle of heartache. And by no means is it anyone's fault. It's life. We were happy that the girls were happy. That's all we wanted for them was to be happy. So that puts us in a scenario where 
we are traveling as much as humanly possible um, for everybody that knows us. For the last uh, 13 years, uh, there has been plenty of time. I don't, I don't even want, it's been over a hundred sometimes. <laughs> Get off work on Friday, drive through the night, try to be there on Saturday morning and sleep up a couple hours, visit with everybody that we could and drive back on Sunday. Um, and there was a couple of things that came along with that that made it very hard for us. And I know it made it, in a lot of ways, it was uh, very, very hard on the kids because there was a lot of things that they wished, I wish they were here and we weren't able to be there. You can't plan everything on weekends, you know. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we've missed. And um, I know I've told them over the years, and this was something I'm still working on. <laughs> uh, I blamed myself for a lot of that. Because if, if, uh, if I hadn't come in the picture, there wouldn't be all the heartbreak and, you know, all the things missed. Um, but I hope more than anything that our entire family knows that with all of our hearts, we, as best we could, did the best we could, and we love them so much. And are so thankful that two parents are sitting here right now and can honestly say that all of our kids are saved and know God is our personal savior. Uh, two of our grandbabies, Zali and Zalen, they're gonna be baptized coming up soon and we're excited about that. Uh, I just know it was a it was a hard time for me and I expressed like I said I expressed it to them that I'm I was sorry that uh, your mom wasn't there for a lot of things that I know she wanted to be so there was a lot of nights of tears uh, and heartache there was. and I, and I'm saying that because it put us in a valley. We thought we, you know, you're in this dark valley because before we met the things that we were going through, we talked about getting back closer to God. And then here we are, we're back in this, this, it's a different valley. And we never got in sync when it come to going to church. Uh, we tried different churches, uh, but again, it was like Patty was saying earlier. It was one of those situations where the the pain just kind of overtook, and the enemy would just make you feel like, "Why? Why are you even bothering?" And we did not give it to God. And some of that is just, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you really describe it. It was just, you're in that place and some of it's just independence. Some of it's stubbornness. Some of it's, you know, why am I, I don't want to bother God with my problems. He's got bigger problems. I know that's, that, that was always a huge problem for me. I didn't care at all to pray for other folks or to try to help other folks out. But when it comes to my own problems, uh, God's got better things to do than to listen to me complain. But um, the hopes of getting back in church and, and becoming a strong couple in God did not happen. And I want to speak this to you right now. God will never leave and he'll never forsake us. Even in that time in that valley, God was with us. 
Um, it's when you get to those points that when you can't walk, he'll pick you up. And when your prayers are tears, he sees everyone. And he knows what they mean. <laughs> the reason this makes me so emotional is because I love my kids so much. And going back to those years, I wish we could have done better. I wish we could have given more. More of our time. Uh, more of a lot of things. But um, I'm so, so thankful that I can sit here and say that we have a very tight and a very loving family today. Um, God done a wonderful thing in our lives. And uh, I'm so thankful for each and every one of them. And I'm so thankful for what our family is like today. But that <laughs> That wasn't the case for us back then. There was a lot of things that we went through with my kids uh, that were hard. Um, but you just do the best you can to help them. Uh, to try to guide them through it. Uh, so I guess that you come through us meeting uh, at a dark time and and it seemed like there was this light coming and there was i'm not going to sit here and say that i there wasn't a day that went by that i wasn't thankful that she was with me but a lot of the things that went on uh still caused a lot of heartache for both of us and we we never got rooted in a church how did we get through that <laughs> I would be amiss if I didn't tell you that a lot of it was just complete stubbornness <laughs> and sheer determination. Yeah. We were going to make this work and forgiving hearts. And there again, that's where I know God was still, he was there with us through all of this. Even though I know I wasn't actively praying, I wasn't actively seeking God's guidance. Uh, I'll just be honest. That there's a lot of times if somebody had said, you know, where's your Bible? I had to go find it somewhere with dust on it. That's just the reality. I'm just being honest. Uh, but God never left me. He was always right there. And the man sitting before you today and this beautiful woman sitting before you today can testify to the fact when we look back on that now, we realize more than ever that God was molding us. God was helping us be forged in the fire because he had something in store for us down the road that this was going to uh, bring us to where we're talking to you today <clears throat> through Broken Warrior Ministries. A couple of things that, well, yeah, we were stubborn. Um, one thing I can tell you is we can't do projects together. <laughs> it just ain't gonna happen. It's like two chiefs, two bosses trying to work and <laughs> We butt heads way too much when it comes to that. So well, the reason I say that is, hey, know, know your limits, okay? Uh, <laughs> know how to work together, especially in hard times, guys. Yeah. If you're not turning to God, you, you got to understand where your limits are and try not to push each other's buttons. Because uh, we sure weren't leaning on God at that time. You know, the one thing I can say is um, what you learn in, in marriage is that when you forgive somebody, 
you know, there's many times over the years you have to forgive each other. And you, if you truly forgive the way that Jesus forgives, you have to leave that in the past and start afresh. Because I know that I'm not trying to counsel people here, but, you know, when we keep bringing up our faults and things like that, you never get anywhere. Well, and... And so as a couple, I just want to tell people, you know... Find forgiveness for things and try to leave those things in the past because the more, if you keep digging them up, they can never be buried. Um, so. I won't go into detail, but, I, you know, guys, we can be pretty stupid sometimes. And I'm talking to my guys out there right now. We can do stupid stuff. Make really dumb choices. Um. And I'm thankful that I sit beside a lady that has a forgiving heart. And you say things that are hurtful. You do things that are hurtful. Uh, the best thing you can do for yourself, like Patty's saying, forgiveness is more for you than it is the other person, is to release that, I guess, that claw that it just has in you uh, when, when you are able to forgive somebody realize that just because you think it's a certain way and somebody told me something a very long time ago and it's always been so true just because you think it's a certain way because of what you did or what you said you meant it a certain way guys if you say something that hurts your wife the reality that you have to deal with is her reality even though you might have thought it was funny because I'll tell you right now with where I worked at, me and the guys, we would cut up all the time. But my version of cutting up was not that comical for her. And so I, I had to realize that when I said things that even though I was just trying to be funny or just kidding, it wasn't that funny to her. And another thing that I would add to that is you can never say I'm sorry enough when it comes to a marriage. Those two little words right there can be some of the most powerful words you'll have in your marriage. And throw the pride out the window uh, because give it about two weeks and you don't even remember what that argument really started over. Just that it had exploded and nobody was willing to say I'm sorry. That's kind of how we made it through a lot of the the difficult times. Um, if I had to sum it up, it was just by the grace of God. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just God watching out for us when didn't, we didn't have him put first. And we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we're just trying to stumble through this because when your heart broke, when you're going through hard times, when you're... You've got all these other things on your mind, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, when we got when we got married, uh, the situation that we were in, we were starting from zero. <laughs> we didn't have anything. So uh, here I am, thirty something years old, and same for her, and we're we're starting from scratch, and so you have the the financial burdens that come along, and for new people, newlyweds, uh, you know finances and things like that don't the number one reason that that people uh, end up in divorce is finances and God always made it pretty clear in his word how much of a hold money can take on people don't let that be that way with you again I can't I can't emphasize enough if you're considering getting married and going into a relationship uh seek out some counseling not because you got problems because you want to know how to fight them when you get them because you are going to get to them um so that i mean that's that's really all i can as far as how we got through it stumbled through the most of it <laughs> just by the grace of god when we start to fall he would prop us up and uh now we get to the what to me is the pinnacle of all this. Yes. We we decided to 
moved to Altus, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. to be a little bit closer to family. Now, now, this is a God thing. This was a God thing. Guys, I did not look up what Altus looked like. <laughs> I and you know when I used to visit Patty and how and you know we'd go there I'd be like there's no way I could live around here it's too flat. Well, God called us to Altus. <laughs> now I got a lot of friends in Altus that are probably going to watch this and I love you guys. Uh, I met some of the most wonderful people yes. uh, in my life in Altus, and I could name off so many people. Uh, there was. You know, there's people down there that I had worked with in active duty military and got down there. And if I thought how Oklahoma was flat, uh, I, I had a brand new perspective. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are no trees. Um, you can see in every direction for 30 plus miles. And uh, I thought Travis Air Force Base was windy. Nothing like this place. So uh, it was a God thing to move to Altus. It was. God did so many things there. Uh, he he did. did. I mean, he started opening doors and putting people in our lives. And one uh, one person, I know one person for a couple of people for me at work is, you know, um, Jason. He was a, a man that uh, pointed me back toward God. John, uh, just they, there's so many, but the one, the one person that opened my heart to something that was going on in my life would uh, would have to be. Pastor Dick Chapman. Now, I'll I'll just be honest here, because if I don't say it, I know she's going to say it. When she uh, talked about going to their church, I was always used to the small white steeple church with the piano player and the hymnals, and that's just what I knew, and that's what I loved. And I still do. And so how did how did Pastor Chapman come into the picture? So um, I do physical therapy. So he had come in as a patient. He had had a, a knee replacement. And he and I, um, I know I'm talking about things with him, but he wouldn't have cared. Um, he just started, he just, he was a preacher and he just started talking to me about God. He was never, I mean, he had the sweetest, just the sweetest attitude and just was just, a, you could just tell he was a precious person and just talking to him. Intimidating guy though. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you just saw him. I don't know, what was he, like 7'1"? No. He looked like he was (laughs) 7'1 to me because I was like this (laughs) to look up at him. He was just a giant of a man. You know, he would just listen to the things that I had to say. He never once, you know, said this was wrong, this was, you know, anything. He just was there to listen and be a witness and just show his, he had a heart for God. He, he was just show a you precious, love. precious person. He showed love. And Definitely. I, I, and I, then I, when you met his wife, she was just as precious as he was. I mean, he, I mean, joy she, exuded <laughs> off of him. It was like, I don't care what kind of mood you're in. If you stood around both of them, you was happy. And uh, Patty came home one day and said, I really would like to go visit uh, the church where uh, Brother Chapman preaches. I said, well, where's it at? <laughs> well, it's in the movie theater downtown. What? 
And yeah. so, and I'm, I'm again immediately. I'm like, no, nah, no. The contemporary whole thing. Um, mm -mm. not really into that time went by and as usually does happen my wife got her way and thank God for it guys you better thank God if you got a, a woman that keeps coming to you and asking you to come to church you're, look, you're a blessed man um, so we finally went and uh, it altered my life forever a seed was planted there. Uh, one of the heaviest things for me was Pastor Chapman was talking about a how men are when it comes to a relationship with God and how hard it is for them to understand and accept the unconditional love of God because growing up there was no such thing. You only got approval from your father if you worked really hard or you done something exceptional and you know uh, and with you guys that have watched the testimony uh, a relationship with my father early in the years did not did not make it easy for me to understand or accept unconditional love and I remember so vividly one day we had uh, after that service I was sitting out in the parking lot with Patty and I just broke down because I told her, I said, I, I, I've never been able to accept unconditional love from God. And a, a seed was planted there. Uh, and again, you know, with men like Jason Parker, uh, John Rice, and having uh, Ray Lesmeister back in my life, being around Dave Soderlund, just... You know, a lot of those guys, and I'll, I'll say this, we had a, uh, and wouldn't you know it, it would be the day that Patty couldn't be there. Uh, we had a prophet come to a church service, and uh, he spoke over my son and me that day. And I know there's probably, you know, some of you out there, you can have your idea of what you think of that, but I'm telling you right now, uh, one of the best things you could ever do for yourself is to take your filter, your Baptist filter, your uh, Pentecostal filter, whatever filter or the name over the door, take that filter off and realize the Holy Spirit is a powerful thing. And the Holy Spirit can work in many ways. Don't ever limit the Holy Spirit because there is no limit to him and what he's able to do. Uh, the things that that man spoke over my life and my son's life, uh, a lot of those things have come to pass. And one of the things that I'm frequently reminded of is when he said that uh, I had questions, and I did. Uh, like that day was, what in the world am I doing here? <laughs> uh, but now I look back, and he said, he, he said, God knows you have questions, you have questions, and he's that. He's going to put godly men in your life. And he has done that so much since that time. The guys in Altus uh, and the guys in Cookville, because uh, after, after we were at Altus for a couple years, my mom started having a lot of medical conditions. And I mean, the doctor basically came out and said, if you you've got to relocate her. It's probably, she won't, she won't survive down here because uh, people that move to Altus from the outside don't do very well. And I was like, okay, I guess that means it's time, you know, to start thinking about this. And I remember the day that, uh, Jason and Heather Tinch, uh, basically our brother and sister, they called and said, um, either starting up a, a new team at ATC and, uh, another guy that's like a brother to me, Zeke's going to be the team leader. And I don't know that those guys had called me. I don't know how many times since we'd moved down there. Mm -hmm. When you coming home, when you coming home, and it just wasn't time. But for some reason we hung up the phone that day and we knew I, I felt different. And when I told her, it was like 
God spoke to her too, and we just knew it was it was time to come home. And um, so, kind of like going to Altus, what did it take us? Maybe eight weeks. Yeah, it was fairly quick going. And we were in Altus, back and then to Tennessee. I think it took only four, and we were back in Tennessee. So, I mean. We've, we've gotten this deployment thing down pretty good because we got to Arkansas even quicker. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we, we got back in Tennessee, and <laughs> it, the irony of it all. Uh, we, we really started thinking a lot about we've got to find a church. Yes. We have got to get ourselves anchored in church. Uh, and again... I, I'd be amiss if I didn't put this in here. Andrew, which is our our worship leader, uh, is my son, and you know he kind of got into the worship group when he was uh, at Altus, and he's got into the worship group at Life Church, and when well, you know it, Life Church South. Mm-hmm was in a movie theater. <laughs> was, what is it with church and a movie theater? It's just, uh, I've come it's back right. to go to another movie theater, but that's where they, that's where they could, that's where they found to be able to sit up to where they could, uh, have a South campus. And, um, uh, again, met some of the most precious yes. people we could have ever asked to meet. So Heather and Jason started going to live church. Uh, Andrew was already uh, playing with uh, the worship team and getting started there. And uh, I just, Alex Lissick, love him to death. Yeah. Um, it was the first time in uh, probably over 15 years or more but we both decided to serve yeah that's when things really changed yeah that's when we started to realize we've got things that we need to be doing for God and we have not been doing that and it's time to step up and get busy for God. Um, I knew it was a God thing, especially for Patty. Because Patty's not a very out front, you know, in you know, mingling uh, socialite person. She's, uh, I, people probably wouldn't know it, but I'm not really that way either. I could stay at home all the time if I had to. Uh, but she was a door greeter and that just blew my mind. I'm like, I can't believe, you know, God's moving. He's really moving. She's a door greeter. And it was just, it was a blessing to be a part it was. of, of that group. And there's a whole lot of different people. I'm not even going to start naming off names because I know I'll leave somebody out that just loved on us. Yes. Um, and I started to feel that love again. And not that it was ever gone, but I was opening my heart back up to it. And uh, the whole COVID thing hit. And where we were going to South, they actually had to shut South down. And we kind of just rolled back into the North Campus. And during, during the COVID, the beginning of it, something hit me that I just decided that I have to get into God's word. I have to make him a priority. And I began to get up every single morning and read his word and pray. And uh, I, at the time I started January of 2020 is when this thing with my eyes started. So taking a lot of steroids, prednisone, so I was going nights on end with no sleep. So I was spending a lot of time with God, and which was a blessing. Mm -hmm. 
and things and the it's it, the word is is true the more word you you take in the more you're drawn into god mm-hmm. hearing his word reading his word talking to god it changes everything yeah. and i started having things and one of the things that was most important for me is i said you know what god i don't care where i've been to church before i don't care what doctrines have tried to teach me whatever all i want to know and understand is your word according to the holy spirit teach me holy spirit teach me if there are gifts that you want me to have if pour pour them out i want them all i want all of you i'm all in and i'll never forget we were sitting over one morning um at jason heather's house putting on i was helping him do plugs and switches wire up his house and again i wasn't big on contemporary music um the whole contemporary church thing but man god got a hold of me and uh I was listening to contemporary Christian music when I did, and and it just hit me like a bolt of lightning. And man, this guy is singing my life, what I came through, and now that's all I listen to. <laughs> I have got all my day. headphones on all day long, and I just I had a a revival right there in Jason and Heather's pantry. I was in there shouting, crying. And um, that's when things really started to change. And, you know, I would pray. I'm really bad because when I experience something good, kind of like if you go to a restaurant and it's like really good food, you're like, you got to go here. Well, I'll take you. You know, I get kind of zealous with that sort of thing. And I want to just grab people and just, you got to come up here and see how this feels. <laughs> and I, I have to watch myself with that. But I would get up in the mornings and I would pray that God would just put it on Patty's heart to get up in the morning and sit down and read. I never said anything and it just amazed me. It wasn't very long after that. She just started getting up on her own and then we started reading every morning together. Mm -hmm. Um, Started praying every morning together and man, that's where things just got, I mean, God just took over. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, he called me to preach and didn't know how that was going to look or work or anything like that but uh, that's how Broken Warrior Ministries came about Um, there's a lot of people out there guys we know you're broken and look, even Christians, <laughs> you're not going to go through this. You're not immune to brokenness just because you are a Christian. It's just you have an advocate with the Father to help you. You have somebody there with you. Uh, we let ourselves go through a lot of heartache and a lot of hurt for a long time without crying out to God. But thanks be to God, he was there with us anyway and was shaping us. And I can tell you this with every fiber of my being. I have loved this woman since the first time I've seen her. But there is a love that exists between us now that far surpasses anything that I can explain to you. The only way that I that anybody can understand what I'm saying is if you understand and have experienced it for yourself. When we started putting God above each other, because I, I did, I had to apologize to her. Uh, I apologized to my family for not being the leader that I should have been, but I apologized to her because I had actually put her above God. And when we started putting God first, it changed everything. Uh, I see 
my wife in a completely different light than I have ever seen her. When the Bible talks about how men are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, that is a statement that you need to let sink in, guys, because uh, when I look at her, there is nothing that I would not sacrifice to protect her and to show her my love. And that means sometimes just shut up. You don't have all the answers. Say I'm sorry. A lot of those different things. When you put your spouse and you make it to where you're trying to make them happy the way God has, has asked you to, it changes everything because you move self out of the way. And the best way to do that is with a word and start getting in with God. And then the things that you thought were important before, they, they just don't seem important anymore. And the things that God wants in your life start seeming important. And you want to do those things and you want to draw, draw closer to Him and you want to yes. be the person that He wants you to be. And not so much of who you think you are supposed to be. You know, and whoever, whatever God's called you to do, He can he equips you. He gives you what you need. Seek Him. Just seek Him. Put Him first. And just watch God work in your life. Humble yourselves. Look, there's not a single time that, uh, that we have sat and talked to you guys that I don't feel like, I don't know what in the world God was thinking when he asked me to, to do this. But God did. And I read about Moses. Okay, I'm not alone in this. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that God's called to do things and they're like, why, what, what? me? Really? Uh, you've heard me say this over and over, and I'm going to continue to say this over as long as I am preaching. Be available. Be obedient. Yes. In the smallest of things. God tells you if you are faithful in the little things, I'll reward you with big things. And it will only grow. Your relationship with him will grow. You'll find yourself wanting to do more and more. Guys, this world needs love. This world doesn't need a social club. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not speaking bad against church. But those buildings are not where church happens. It's outside of those walls where you are affecting people and you're living your life before people that makes the difference. One of the reasons we wanted to do this whole series is just so people could see we go through our own problems. We all have our own stories. We all have our own hurt and our grief. But at the end of the day, the most important thing you'll ever do for you and for everybody around you is give your heart and life to Jesus. Yes. That is what Broken Warrior Ministries is all about. I have always believed in a warrior spirit, my military background, however you want to call it. There is a warrior spirit that God gives us, but we don't fight with earthly ways, earthly means. We fight with love. Go through and read Ephesians 6. I go. I dress myself every morning with Ephesians 6. Uh, and the broken part was, you know, Patty and I were talking about how do we want to, what name do we want to have for a ministry? And again, like she was saying earlier, there are so many levels of broken and there's so many different periods of broken. There's broken before God. There's broken with God. Uh, there's valleys that you go through just be willing to be honest. One with yourself. That's the most imp important one, to be honest with yourself. But being, be honest with your spouse. 
Be open with your spouse. Communicate with your spouse what you're going through, how you're feeling. I mean, blocking them out of your life is not going to help. Um, today is a, a really good example. I, everything that's going on with my eye again, I've had three different times where I've had people pray for me and my eye would be perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden here it just comes slamming back and you have those moments where you're like, what, what do I, what am I doing? What, what did I do wrong? And you, you, you let the enemy start whispering in your ear, you know, and I just, I lean on, I lean on God, but I also lean on her. Um, she's my helpmate. And as long as God gives us breath and we're able, Broken Warrior Ministries wants to help you. We want to point people to Jesus. Um, God truly has blessed the broken road that brought us together. Uh, we've talked about that many times. So uh, anything else you want to add before? You know, just, I just want to be that person like Dick Chapman was to me. I just want to be that person that brings the Lord. And you know, he didn't condemn. He just showed God's love. Yeah, you don't need to We're beat people to... over the head with this. I mean... The world does that enough. We've all, you know, if you, you've been in this world for any time at all, you've experienced broken in one form or another. You know, we all do. Life is not great at times, but God is with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. You know, um, I heard some news. We heard some news that Pastor Chapman went on to be with the Lord. And you know... I know that he he's up there in heaven right now and he's okay and everything's he's he's living the life now you know but I just thank God that he put him in my path and you know another person is just Lanita Williams she was one of the most precious things to me and she showed me what living for God was all about and a relationship with God and I just want to be that person to other people. And, you know, she's went on to be with the Lord, too. And I know she is hooping and hollering and having a good time in heaven. Because she loved the Lord with her whole heart. She was an awesome woman. Awesome woman. And she changed my life forever just by showing me who God was in her life. And that's, and that's what I want to be. I just want to be that person that shows people that God is real and that He He loves you. Mm-hmm. He's here for yes, you. Yes, He does. And he wants to move in your life. He does. And I think it's time. And what she just said, that is a that's a perfect way to wrap this up. That's the challenge, folks. Christians get out there and show people Jesus. Yes. I know a lot of you may have heard this before, uh, but you're gonna hear it again. You may be the only Bible that some people read that takes them to Jesus. Show them the love of God. Yes. Don't go to them talking about how well you're a, you're lost without Jesus and you're going to go to hell and beating them over the head with their sins. Look, I understand that's the case. That's not how you win folks to Christ. You want to win, you want to show people the way to Jesus, then do it the way Jesus did. Just love them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What a sacrifice. Yes. All the things that Jesus taught us that are in his word, the two things that he said were the most important was to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. But the second thing, being just as equal to the first, is to love your neighbor as yourself. Show this world love. 
It needs it now more than ever. Yes. Christians, I want you to start praying. If you're hearing this tonight and as a couple, as a single person, as just somebody who happened to click on this and got wrapped up in what we were saying, thank God you're here because this is the most important decision you could make in your entire life of opening your heart and giving your life to Jesus because he gave his life for you that you could have a way to salvation. So tonight, again, Christians, be praying. If you feel the Holy Spirit dealing with you, and when I say that, if you just feel down in your heart as I'm talking to you right now, that uneasy feeling, something in the pit of your stomach just tells you that what he's saying, I'm, I'm missing that. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't know what he's talking about, that relationship. That means that that's the Holy Spirit letting you know that you need to ask Jesus into your life. Romans, <laughs> Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt believe with thy mouth, Lord Jesus Christ, and that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. Believe in who he is and what he done. Ask him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you. And he is faithful and just to do that very thing. The Bible teaches us, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. His promises are real. So I'm going to ask you tonight, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask you to bow your head with us right now. Again, Christians be praying. And I just want you to repeat and believe this prayer we're going to pray together and ask Jesus into your heart tonight. Will you do that? Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And Jesus, I believe you died on a cross that I could be saved. And I believe that after three days, God raised you from the dead. I ask you, please come into my life. Be my savior. Forgive me of my sins. And help me to live a life for you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you did that tonight, welcome to the family. I can't tell you what a change you're going to see in your life. Are you? We want you to reach out to us, reach out to anybody that you know that's a Christian. I'm sure there's been people praying for you. Um, please reach out to us. We thank you so much for being patient with us as we have gone over this for the last several weeks uh, for this testimony. But... Uh, God's been laying this on our hearts for a long time. Uh, just been really resistant to do it because I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Uh, but that's just how it is. Uh, and to be honest, it's turned out to be a lot more of a blessing than I ever imagined it would be. And I thank you all so much for being with us through all this. And uh, I mean, to date, we have a congregation of 800 and I'm just so thankful <laughs> for each and every person that comments for the messages that we get you have no idea what a blessing it has meant to me personally in my life because i didn't i doubted myself you know of what we were doing and and god has made it very plain to me that look i i called you to do a thing uh do what i've asked you to do and uh, just keep on and uh, you guys have been uh, so wonderful. We've had so many, some very precious souls, honestly, who, who we've never met. Uh, and so we thank you all so much for your support and your love that you've poured out on us. It's meant a lot to us. And just continue to pray for us. And we are definitely, we'll be praying for you. Any prayer requests that you have, please let us know about them. Uh, again, we have a, a prayer journal. And when you guys ask for prayer, we put it in that journal and that is something that we pray over every morning. So we're praying with and for you for God to have his way and his will in your life. 
if you ever need anything, if there's a way that Broken Warrior Ministries can serve you, and we, we will do our best to do that. We love you, and we thank you for being here tonight. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week.